Hi, on a previous video on QMMM calculations, we analyzed a relaxed surface scan for a reaction between a isopropyl amine and acetic anhydride. So here in ChemCraft, we have part of the uh, relaxed surface scan a trajectory file open. And if we move around, we can see that this a nitrogen from an amine has to attack this carbon atom. The scan is a little bit long, so I'm already near the, the end. And we see that the two atoms are approaching. And finally, a bond has formed. When we have a trajectory file, we can analyze the information from the geometries in different ways. The fastest way is to use the chem graph to watch the energy graph from a multiple XYZ file. So this is what chem graph shows, which is basically the energy as a function of the structure number. So this is not a very convenient way to display any kind of results because some of the steps may take a, a lot of cycles to converge their geometries until the next step in the relaxed surface scan. We would like other ways to preferably automatically analyze this information. What I'm going to show here is a very simple script that I wrote in Octave, which can also be run in MATLAB. They are mostly compatible, that analyzes automatically a very large trajectory file, hopefully without any bugs. What I do here is I put the file name that I'm going to analyze. So this is the same trajectory file that we saw in the QMMM video. I will put a link in the description for that. And I'm calling a function that's called read trajectory XYZ. And I give it that file name, which is a string. So this function outputs a number of variables, the energies, the geometries, the number of atoms for each geometry, they are all the same, but we don't need to know it in advance. The program will determine it and the number of different geometries in this optimization. And then we will do some processing with that to plot the energy as a function of the uh, distance between atoms 3 and 14, which are here the atoms that we are interested in. So we can see here that the number 3 is a carbon and number 14 is nitrogen. This is a, a numbering a, based on chemcraft, starting from 1. Remember always that ORCA numbers starting from 0, so what in ORCA would be atom 2 in chemcraft and in octave would be atom 3. Going back to octave, we set the atoms that we want to plot and then we will run a small loop in order to make a distance vector and plot the energies uh, as a function of this distance vector. I'm going to speak a little bit more about that later. So if we go to the function, the function is quite simple. So first we need to open the file with fopen and we give it the file name and we give it the R a variable that means that it's going to be read only. We don't want to modify the trajectory file, so we don't run any risk of altering the file. And here's some default values. So the maximum number of geometries that I have set up is 2000, but this number can be increased. But at the end, the number of geometries is going to be truncated to the number of geometries in the trajectory file. So this is a buffer that we give it. And we define energies is going to be a matrix and geometries is going to be a cell array. So a cell array is a container that can contain almost any other uh, data type inside. So the cell array is going to have a length of the number of geometries times two. And the first component in this cell array for each geometry is going to contain the atom uh, names and the second component is going to contain the whole matrix of all the XYZ coordinates of each atom. 
So we want to keep the atom names for further processing for other purposes. So what I'm using here is a text scan function that it's a function in Octave that's able to analyze text files and recognize a certain pattern. What I'm doing is telling this to uh, recognize a floating point number, which is going to be the number of atoms in atoms. And I run this function only one time and I use the limited tabs and because the output of the text scan function is going to be a cell array and I want the actual variable, I'm going to basically reassign the contents of the cell array that contains only one element into the name of the variable, n atoms. And I'm not going to modify this again. So n atoms is going to be one of the outputs of the function. Then I'm going to start a while loop. And I start from a number of geometries equal to one, and I'm going to increase that number inside the loop. So while k geom is lower than max geom, which is in here 2000, and I have not reached the end of file, I'm going to keep running the loop. Because I already obtained the number of atoms, and I don't need it anymore, but I want to be able to scan through the different lines that have different formats, I'm going to basically make this dummy variable called n atoms discard, and I'm not going to use this. I'm going to show now the structure of this file, so you can see why I'm choosing the different options. So here we see that the trajectory file is a quite a large file that has the different geometries uh, one below the other. The geometry starts with the number of atoms. So I need to do a text scan for this number. That was the first text scan that I used. And then there's a, basically a line that contains the words coordinates from orca job, and then my file name, then the word E for energy, and then the actual number. So I need to match the format for this particular line in the input of the text scan function. And then I'm going to have basically 218 atoms, each one with X, Y, and Z coordinates. I'm going to run the text scan function 218 times, and I'm going to recognize this format. That is basically a string, which is basically symbols or letters, and then three floating point numbers. And after that, I will repeat the loop. I need to read the number of atoms again, which I don't need, so I discard it. And then I read this line for because I want to recover the energy of the second structure. And then I read the geometry of the second structure, and so on, until I reach the end of file. So this is a quite a large file. Finally, I'm going to have to do something so that the when the loop finishes, because I have reached the end of file, it doesn't throw an error in one of the text scan functions. So back in Octave, what I'm doing here is for the energy, I am running text scan. Okay, I have five strings, which are coordinates from orca job, etc., and then the floating point number that I want. And I'm running this one time. So in here, I need to put basically a caveat that says, if I have reached the end of file, break the loop. And then because I only care about the value of the energy, the number and not the words, I'm going to say, okay, energies in parentheses, k geom. So the k geom number energy is going to be out of this a cell array that has six components. I'm going to choose only the sixth one. I don't want the others. I want the number, not the words. Then I am going to run the text scan function again and giving the format of a string that contains two characters because some elements have one character and some elements have two, and then three floating point numbers. And I'm going to repeat this n atoms times. So in this case, 218. And this is going to give me the current geometry. So the current geometry is going to be a cell array which has cells uh, of different sizes inside. So what I'm going to do here is the first component of the uh, current geometry cell array, which contains the list of basically element symbols, is going to go into this variable. And then the three other cell arrays that contain basically the x coordinates for is number two. Y coordinates is number three, and Z coordinates is number four, are going to be put inside a matrix. So these square brackets signify a matrix. 
So the current coordinates is going to be a matrix that has 218 times three components. And then basically this is some options to get this into the geometry's cell array. It's just a formatting thing because I'm making a cell array where the cells contain a cell array inside. So these are nested cell arrays, but it's just a small thing that has to be done. Basically, and then I advance the counter. Eventually, uh, I have advanced the counter one extra number beyond the actual number of geometries, so I need to decrease that number. And then I output the energies uh, matrix and the geometry cell array, and then I close the file. That's very important. So if I go back to the main program, then what I'm doing is retrieving out of the geometries for each one of the geometries, k in the vector 1 to k geom, k geom is now the maximum number of geometries. So I'm retrieving the position, the xyz coordinates of atom 1 out of the kth geometry. I am getting the row vector, which is at row number atom 1, and I'm getting the three components. So that's the semicolon. And I do the same for position two, and I'm, I do it for atom two, and then I basically take the norm of the subtraction of the two vectors. So the norm is just the length of the vector. This gives me a component of a distance vector that is going to have the same length as the, as the energies vector. So then I just plot this. If I run this, it takes a little bit of time because it's a large file. Okay, here, so, it has finished, it maybe took 30 seconds. This was quite a large file. And what we have plotted here is basically the energy as a function of the carbon nitrogen distance. So this plot has to be analyzed from right to left. First, the carbon and nitrogen were around 4.8 angstrom apart. And then when they start coming closer, the energy starts to rise because at some point there's a, a small transition state for, um, for the reaction for the nucleophilic attack. So this graph contains the energies for all the geometries in the relax surface scan, all the intermediate and optimized geometries that occur for each step. The way to see this is by doing plotting as a scatter plot. So in order to do that, I go back to the file, but I will comment this line because I don't want to run all the extraction of the information again. I just want to analyze and plot this. So I'm going to change this by S, that means squared. So I run this and I can see here that the plot looks slightly different because, for example, all these small squares are intermediate unoptimized geometries that have occurred for a step where the carbon nitrogen distance was 4.5. So plotting the graph in this way, it is easier to see that I only need the lower parts of the graph. I don't need everything. I could make easily a script that will only obtain all this local minima. I only need to get the minimum energy out of each step. And this will give me the energies of the optimized geometries for the relax of a scan. So this is also available in the Orca output file, but in here I can extract it myself and I can do more stuff with this, which I'm going to probably show in future videos. So this is all for today. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and if you have done so, please like and subscribe and we will see each other in following videos. Thank you very much.